Hey everybody, uh, Mike Barr here. It is Sunday, uh, March 17th, um, 2023. And uh, um, today uh, for my Safety Sunday uh, topic, I want to talk about mad distances a little bit and uh, a little bit about some of these contact injuries and fatalities that we're having. Uh, it, uh, it, you know, it's something that I know everybody's concerned about. And uh, so I want to spend a little bit of time on that. Uh, back, uh, back in 2004, um, I was working for uh, uh, one of the, uh, uh, a large electrical uh, utility contractor. Um, and uh, I was a regional safety manager for this company. And, and uh, uh, the company I was working for and, and several others uh, joined in the uh, T&D partnership with, with OSHA. And I know most of you are familiar with that partnership. And I, I had the opportunity to serve on the committee uh, that analyzed all the accident data that, that uh, OSHA had. And um, we, were to, uh, we were tasked to identify some of the common causes uh, for fatalities and injuries in, in, in uh, the utility contracting um, industry. So uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun and I, I learned a ton on that committee. And uh, uh, we basically just went into a conference room with boxes and boxes of, of accident reports and uh, tried to uh, analyze everything and, and come up with the, uh, the data that was needed so we could develop our strategies and, and best practices to, uh, to try to stop uh, some of the injuries and uh, fatalities that were happening. So, uh, so basically what we found uh, during that, uh, that uh, experience was that there were nearly 500 uh, 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 fatalities during the time period we were looking at, which was basically from the time OSHA started keeping records on, on these types of injuries with our industry until 2004. And uh, we found that there were 77 falls from elevation. There were uh, 52 flash burns. There were 34 struck by objects, uh, 30 caught between. And then, of course, by far, uh, the number one cause was contact with energized conductors. And there were 303 of those. So what we did was we tried to look at each one of those and found that that uh, generally that that Failure to follow proper procedure was a part of every failure listed with every one of these incidents that involved contact with overhead lines. Experience did not seem to be an issue. Training also was not a, an issue generally. Um, when it came come to violation of BAD, and, and we all uh, know that if, if we make contact with, a, with, a, with an energized part, generally that means that we violated MAD distance. Uh, and usually it related to a lack of, of cover and personal protective equipment. And again, we didn't find a lot of uh, anything that really led us to believe that, that experience and training was, was, was an issue with, with most of these generally. So when we looked at proper cover, uh, many cases refer to cover being used, which would indicate that the, that the crews had blankets and, and line hose available um, and it, it, nothing really led us to believe that they didn't have what they needed. In other words, it wasn't like they were forgetting to bring that stuff with them to the job site. It just uh, uh, appeared that, that not having the, the covering, uh, the cover on the affected area, that was the issue. That generally was the issue. And again, training and experience didn't seem to be a problem. So when we look at PPE, for each one of these. Uh, most of the uh, data points would indicate that, again, PPE was available because you would see things in these action reports like lineman removed his, his uh, rubber uh, gloves or, or sleeves. Uh, most of these all indicated that the PPE was there and it was available. We, we tried to determine whether or not uh, incorrect selection was a problem. You know, did did they have the wrong class of glove or, or something to that uh, effect? And, and of course, that was not an issue. Uh, we also tried to determine whether any of them related to, to damage PPE. In other words, the glove had a hole in it or the sleeve was torn or something 
like that. And, and again, nothing indicated uh, that that was, that was an issue. Training and experience, again, also was not an issue with these, with these incident reports. Uh, it just really came down to PPE not being worn uh, was the greatest cause of, of these fatalities when we were dealing with these contact with overhead lines. So, uh, so uh, again, we, we have a problem with people violating MAD, and it's always been a problem. In my entire career, it's always been an issue. Uh, and of course, MAD is something that we have been given. It's a calculated safe working distance that is in, in, intended, of course, to, to provide uh, uh, personal safety when, when we've got line workers working near energized lines uh, and equipment. And it basically is, is, as you know, the closest distance that a qualified people can approach uh, an energized conductor or object. So, so uh, it's, it's something that, that um, uh, we're all aware of. Uh, there is no lineman out there that's not aware of, of uh, minimum approach distance and what it takes to work at or beyond or inside minimum approach distance. And OSHA only gives us three options when it comes to, to uh, MAD. And, and of course, number one is that uh, if, if, if anybody's going to work closer to MAD, the employee's got to be insulated from the, from the park, which means we're going to wear gloves and sleeves. Uh, the second option they give us is to, to um, insulate the employee from the conductive object or, or the uh, or an object of different potential, and in other words, cover. Uh, and then, of course, the third option we have is is live line bare hand work. So, so if we have properly trained uh, line workers out there, and they have the PPE they need, um, why are we having so many contacts? And how is it as an industry we've responded to this? Well. What we did, uh, you know, starting 30 years ago, I remember this very clearly, we started to extend MAD. We, uh, I remember clearly having discussions and, and uh, coming up with different rules to, to uh, increase MAD. And some of the first things we did was we started talking about extended reach. And we determined that, that uh, we were going to bump that, we were going we were going to increase our MAD distance out to five feet. Uh, so that, that uh, you know, anybody gets inside five feet without gloves and sleeves on, even though they're outside mad, they still can reach that conductor. So we bumped it out to five feet. Well, that didn't seem to work either. So we even made it more restrictive. So what have we done? We've gone to cradle to cradle, which means that we got to put it on before we leave the ground. So uh, we don't wait till we get in the air. We put it on before we leave the cradle. We put our gloves and sleeves on. Uh, we do lock the lock. We've got, uh, you know, if you're going to open up a pad mount, piece of pad mount equipment, before you can open that door, you've got to have your gloves and sleeves on. And they stay on until you, until you close and lock that door. So these are the things w that we've done. And, but unfortunately, it's still happening. We're still having these contacts. We're still having people uh, make contact with overhead lines. So do we really have a problem with the rules? Is you know, if the if it was a rule problem, wouldn't all this shit go away? Uh, wouldn't all wouldn't all this uh, this stuff stop if it's if it's a problem with the rules? Um, now I don't know how many of these contacts are happening out there with companies that have cradle to cradle. I know there are some, uh, of course, but but um, it just seems to me that that we're trying to solve a problem by by approaching it from from rulemaking rather than really looking at why it's happening, why it is that, that we still have this problem. Uh, and again, I don't think we have a rule problem. Uh, and I'm not going to, I don't want to debate whether or not making our rules more restrictive is, is right or wrong. Um, I think I've got some strong feelings about that, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to debate that today. Um, I just believe that the current regulations, the way they're written, if followed, will protect the line worker in almost all situations. Uh, if the employee understands and follows the rules and regulations, they're going to be safe. And I just don't think we have a rule problem. I think we have a problem with enforcement. 
I think we have a problem with complacency. We have a problem with pride. We have a problem with arrogance. You know, we have a problem with people doing adequate job briefings. We, we have a problem with people not utilizing their stop work authority and their responsibility to stop work. Um, there's a lot of issues out there. And I don't believe that increasing distances and making rules more restrictive is ever going to solve that. Um, uh, I, I, it's just really, really frustrating. But guys, uh, we got a lot of work to do. We just have too many people getting hurt. Uh, too many people, too many, you know, I think about this a lot and I, I, I know very few line workers uh, that are that are in the field today that don't know of someone or know somebody personally or have a family member uh, or have a coworker that has not gone through um, one of these incidents. Everybody knows somebody. Um, everybody knows what the consequence is. Everybody knows that if I touch that conductor, uh, and, a, and a different potential, it's going to kill me, or I'm going to lose an arm, I'm going to lose a leg, uh, and my life is going to change one way or the other when I touch that conductor. But yet we still have people violating these rules. Um, and, and again, I don't believe that extending the mad distance ground to ground, I, I wish it would fix it. I really do. I wish that was the solution, but it's not. Uh, it, we're, we we got to, you know, until people finally have had enough, uh, until people have finally said, we're, th th no more, you know, we're not, until we get to a point where everybody understands that the people are more valuable than the job, it's not going to stop, you know, and it, it, we've got to get to that point. And um, it, we're not there. We apparently are not there because we're still having, uh, it's almost weekly that we're having one or more overhead line contacts. It, it just continues and it's over and over and over again. I, I, I don't know. Now I'm kind of ranting. I, I rant once in a while and, and I just, I, I know there's a solution to this. I know we can fix it. I know as an industry we can do better. And we have to do better. Um, so that's my that's my uh, rant for the day. I hope I hope that somebody finds these things useful. Uh, it's something that that I just I love this industry. I love the people in it, and it it breaks my heart to read and hear about all these things that are happening. Uh, we can do better. So let's let's all band together and let's make sure that we stop this stuff from happening. Um, and remember, um, I, I always close my, my little videos with, with, uh, with a quote from a good friend of mine. I haven't given him credit for this, uh, but it's, it's somebody I knew many, many years ago. Some of you have probably heard of him. His name's Mark Fellholder. Uh, he was involved in a very serious accident, and um, he used to go around and give some, some talks to, to linemen. And, and he used to always say, every time he'd end a, end a meeting, he'd always say, now, remember, you're the last one to have the hands on it. You're the last one to have that thought go through your mind on what got you where you're at, what you're about to do, and what the potential outcome is. You, nobody else. So, uh, yeah, so uh, let's, let's, uh, let's have a safe week, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk again in a week. Thanks, guys.